Sif's Golden Hair, written by pupils in 3RK, 3RW and 3JB, Robert Wilkinson Primary Academy. A magical story based upon the Viking myth with a special ending created by the children. Asgard, home and fortress of the Viking gods, connected to Midgard, the world of humanity, by a rainbow bridge. Inside the fortress, a majestical bedroom fit for a queen. Standing in the centre of the room was a downy feathered bed from where Sif, wife of Thor, silently slept. Sleeping soundly, dreaming of the things she would do the next day and also of looking at herself in the mirror. Flickering on the windowsill, a flaming candle gave a little glimmer of light to the darkened room. The light from the candle dazzled onto the mirror revealing the precious golden scissors in its reflection that were only ever used by Sif. From out of nowhere, the sneaky and mischievous Loki approached the room and cautiously opened the door. Quickly, Loki caught his eye on something interesting shimmering on Sif's dressing room table and he couldn't resist it. Golden, twinkling scissors shone bright. An idea crossed the cunning trickster's mind. As Sif slept, Loki picked up the scissors, crept over to the innocent goddess and gently took her precious hair in his hands. Cutting her hair like a mad hairdresser, he wasn't happy until there was nothing but stubble left. Piles of long, blonde hair formed a silky carpet on the floor, yet still Sif slept on. Chuckling mischievously to himself, Loki left the room as quietly as he had entered. The next morning, Sif awoke. A shaft of beaming light came bursting through the window and lit up her bedroom. Sleepily, she slipped out of her warm, comfortable bed and looked out of the window. Asgard looked as pretty as ever. Dragons flew and flowers bloomed. Upon her dressing table sat a golden-edged rectangular mirror where Sif combed her hair every morning. As she sat down, the goddess had a terrible shock. Her precious hair had vanished. A deadly scream burst from her mouth. Thor the Mighty heard the deafening sound and went rushing to his wife's aid. What have they done to you? he bellowed. Whoever has done this shall pay! Flaring his nostrils and rubbing his chin with anger, he bellowed, I think I know who would do such a treacherous and devious thing like this. That pesky Loki! Fearlessly stomping along the open field, Thor approached an unsuspected Loki who was giggling to himself. This infuriated Thor even more. Mad with rage, like thunder, Thor instructed Loki to resolve the massive problem with his poor wife as a matter of urgency. Loki trembled with fear. Although he knew the problem had to be solved, the journey would take him down to the dark, mysterious caverns and he feared he may never be seen again. On a mission, he reluctantly marched over the Rainbow Arch towards the cave of Brothers Brock. Cautiously, Loki took a deep breath and approached a cavern entrance. As he stepped in, a revolting smell like the stench of dead rats hits his nostrils. The dark was tortuous. Loki made his way forward through a deep, dark tunnel, which led to a cave entrance. Crouching and sneaking into the dark cave, Loki saw two mysterious figures working extremely hard. They were short. They were shouting. Pump harder! Pump harder! demanded one of the dwarves. I'm pumping as hard as I can, screeched the other dwarf-like figure. Trying not to be seen, the sly trickster shapeshifted into a mouse and scurried closer to get a better view. Whilst one was pumping the bellows relentlessly to create a molten hot fire, the other hammered gold on an anvil to create magical objects. The dwarves were named Brock and Atri and were known as the Brothers Brock. Brock the dwarf who was hammering the metal had squinty eyes and a long wart-covered pointy nose. Beneath his nose was a miserable muttering mouth which looked like an upside-down moon. Atri had a large crooked nose just like his brother. 
He was half bald, and the little bit of hair that he did have was sweaty, dark and knotted. On the walls hung a tiny golden ship, a golden battle boar, a duplicating golden ring and a golden goose. It was like the entire cave was covered in gold. Loki wondered to himself, will these creatures really be able to help me? Bravely, Loki stepped forward and spoke. That's amazing. How did you learn to make that? We're clever. We can make absolutely anything. It's easy, replied Atri. I bet you can't make golden hair, Loki said in a serious voice. Of course we can. <laughs> then prove it, chuckled Loki. Brock pushed a large bar of gold into the furnace. Straight away it began to melt. When it came out, Atri used Thor's old hammer to shape the metal into hair. He hammered and hammered. This was repeating again and again until the locks were finally completed. Loki picked them up feeling relieved. He had to get back before morning. After being in the cave, Loki felt hot, sweaty and in desperate need of a drink. Clutching the hair tightly, he walked along and stumbled across a gentle flowing stream. He thought to himself, a little sip won't hurt, and leant down, seeing his reflection in the stream. Slipping out of his hands, the hair fell into the water, making Loki panic and jump back. What would he do? How would he tell Thor? As he walked back, his heart was racing with the thought of having to face an angry Thor and own up to his mishap. Dragging his body along and dreading having to face a furious Thor, Loki made his way back to the castle. What he didn't know was that Sif was washing her face further downstream in her favourite spot. She was sobbing. Endless tears welled up in her eyes. Her face was red with blotchy patches and the once beautiful goddess's eyes puffed out. Will I always be bald? She wondered to herself quietly. Suddenly, out of the corner of her eye, she noticed some golden glimmering water trickling by, and as she did, she scooped it into her smooth, delicate hands and poured it over her head. At that moment, a miracle happened. Her silky golden hair grew back. Sif couldn't believe her eyes. With her heart full of joy, Sif skipped back towards the castle. Thor was waiting on the bridge, watching the river flowing past and thinking what he was going to do to the treacherous Loki. Just then he saw his wife excitedly rushing home and on her head was her beautiful golden hair. Thor was delighted. Once again, Sif was happy and beautiful. They celebrated with a big feast, but Loki the trickster wasn't invited. <laughs>